What's good everybody, Chris here again, Chris Goes Outdoors. Today we're gonna to address one of the most common questions that I receive about all my hiking and camping excursions. And that question is, what do you do about wildlife on the trail? I'm not going to specifically answer how to keep wildlife away, what you should do in a wildlife encounter, etc., etc. I more specifically am going to make this a story time with Chris video and discuss my specific run-ins with wildlife on the trail. There have been some very interesting ones and um, I think it'll make for some good stories. So I got another list in front of me and we're just gonna run down all of the wildlife encounters that I can recall while out on the trail and how luckily I ended up in one piece at the end of all of them. So my real hiking trips started off in New Hampshire. I started doing essentially any mountain up there that I thought was a cool view. I would look online, find out where the cool views were and I would go there. And it wasn't until probably my, it had to have been like 30 or 40th trip, something along those lines, that I had my first, I guess, real wildlife encounter while on the trail. So I was hiking up Mount Cabot in New Hampshire. This is one of the northernmost uh, 48, 4,000 footers. And I went up there for the weekend. I did Cabot and Cabot the Bulge, the Horn. It was a, a pretty cool loop. So. I got to the intersection just below the summit of Mount Cabot. I ran into a group, was talking to them, and proceeded along my way up toward Mount Cabot. There's a little cabin up there you can stay at. I think uh, Boy Scouts built it at some point. I was walking toward the summit of Mount Cabot, going up the hill, trekking on, and I was looking down, and I feel like I looked up, saw something <laughs> looking back at me, and I did one of these, and by the time I looked back up, all I saw was black, and a big old bear butt <laughs> running through the woods, running as far away from me as possible. It was probably a younger bear, maybe the size of a larger dog, but that was my first run-in with a bear. My heart was absolutely pounding, and I remember I was standing there just like, geez, like that thing was so close to me. <laughs> I had my GoPro on and I was just trying to like record the woods as I was walking by in case it was like standing in there still. And I guess so I would have my death on video. I don't know, something along those lines. Uh, but it never reappeared. I couldn't see it through the woods. That thing high-tailed it out of there. So my first real encounter with any animals while on trail was luckily a good one. It was seeing the backside of a bear sprinting through the woods away from me. And ideally, that's probably what you would want out of an encounter like that. So throughout all of my other hikes while in New Hampshire, my wildlife encounters are pretty rare. Um, I've had some run-ins with the gray jays out there, uh, which for those unfamiliar, I believe they're northeastern birds mainly. I believe they're Canadian gray jays, but they do kind of hang about in the mountains, at least in New England. Um, those will literally snipe food from your hand while you're standing there. You could literally just be sitting there eating on top of a mountaintop and they will try to like come down and grab stuff from you and it's pretty crazy. So I've had some run-ins with them. Um, I've also had some interesting run-ins with grouse, which uh, I refer to as mountain chickens in the whites. They typically hide pretty well. You will very rarely hear them. The only time you typically hear them is when they think you are too close and they decide to take off and fly into a tree. It just scares the crap out of you because it sounds like a helicopter taking off and it can be within feet of you. So I've had some run-ins with grouse. I don't think I have any of them on film, but have definitely run into a bunch of them. And it's still pretty crazy to me because a lot of the locations I've been to in the whites are fairly remote and I would expect that I would have seen animals of some extent, but no, very, very rarely up in the White Mountains have I run into any sort of animal. It wasn't until I started the Appalachian Trail that the animal run-ins kind of took off. So my first legit run-in with wildlife on the Appalachian Trail, you could say was one to remember. I was in Virginia just before the rice field shelter. It's a beautiful area up there, like a nice little mesa almost that you can like look down in. And I had just been talking to a guy from Germany who was on the trail. We were hiking like off and on, running into each other. And I went up ahead, he was gonna stop eating, whatever. So I went up ahead, was getting toward the shelter, and the trail did like kind of a turn. So I was walking down the trail, had my head down around the turn, and as I looked up around the turn, there was a bear <laughs> that crossed the trail and I just stopped dead in my tracks. This was a big bear, it was a mother bear, with a cub. So I just stopped dead in my tracks and thought initially to myself, I was like, 
it's fine. They don't see you. They don't see you. They don't. See. And I swear to God, right as I said that, both the mom and cub, who were looking this way initially, both turned and looked right at me. And I was just like, oh, all right, this th this is how I die. So <laughs> I just stood there and I just inched back a little bit, just a bit, and then I stopped. And the cub started walking. So they came out of the woods here trail was here and then it went up a hill this way and the hill had all sorts of plants and stuff growing on it and then the cubs started walking up the hill but the mom oh man the mom was just like looking at me like not today dude don't even don't even try and i stood there absolutely frozen like i i was like oh my god and then the mom started going up the hill and that is probably the point that i realized wow i may not be dead and then I popped my camera out of my, my pocket and I zoomed in and I got some video of the mom and cub walking on the hill above me. And I swear in that video, at one point, you can see they're walking, they're walking and the mom turns back and looks at me. And she said it without saying it, was like, if you come up this hill, I'm going to murder you. And I just like, I was in shock, absolute shock. Just like, I'm shaking right now, like talking about it just cause it was like, it was such an adrenaline rush. Like, <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I don't recommend walking into a bear for your adrenaline rush, but it's like worst case scenario almost that you hear about, besides being like between the mom and the cub. Like if the mom was up on the hill, I was on the trail, and the cub was back there, ooh. Could have ended very differently, but luckily the timing of it all, I just got to kind of watch it and just be like amazed. I think about that frequently, just how different that could have gone, but Luckily, I think I did the right thing in that situation where I just stopped, backed up a little bit, let them do their thing, didn't make any noise. I feel like if I had started to make noise in that case, the mom would have gotten very, very defensive and probably ripped me apart. Don't know, don't really care at this point because I live to tell the tale and uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. So. <laughs> so my next run in with a bear was also in Virginia and this was coming into Waynesboro, Virginia, actually, uh, which is kind of the gateway on the Appalachian Trail, so right before you enter Shenandoah. And I was probably a mile from town, the trail was nice and smooth, and I was cruising along, man, just absolutely in a rhythm. I was getting to town for a nice zero day, enjoyed the Chinese buffet there, and I heard rustling, crazy rustling, like, you get accustomed to hearing a lot of rustling in the woods, but usually it's chipmunks or squirrels or a bird or something like that. Substantially larger rustling in the bushes, probably 15 feet from me. So immediately turned, looked to my right. There is a young bear, probably the size of a large dog, sprinting down the hill. And I just immediately thought to myself, one, how didn't I see that thing? And two, if that was a larger bear and it was not in a good mood, I would be dead right now. <laughs> so I just kept an eye on it. I didn't really move much. And it went probably, I don't know, maybe 40 feet down this hill. Went like this, looked back to see what I was doing. And I was just like not doing anything because I'm not gonna like run. So I just stood there, waited for it to do something. It turned back around and then just went about its business. It started like eating berries off bushes down at the bottom of the hill, like just completely disregarded the fact that I was even there. So again, another close encounter with a bear. And luckily I did nothing and managed to live to tell the tale. 15 feet away from me, that thing was in some bushes and I didn't even see it. I consider myself pretty, pretty good with seeing things and keeping eyes up on the trail. Didn't even see the thing at all. So they could be significantly closer to you than you realize. So once I was in Shenandoah also, I had a couple of run-ins uh, with deer actually. And the deer stories were kind of interesting. So my first one, I was dead alone on the trail, nobody around. I hadn't seen anybody for like hours. And I was walking down the trail and I heard distinctively what sounded like a human sneeze, like a, a complete achoo, turn around, nobody's behind me. I look up, nobody's in front of me. Look behind me again, nobody's there. I start looking around, nobody's around. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way I just like dreamt of that sneeze while hiking. Like what, what happened? And then I turn back around and I see <laughs> there's a deer standing in a bunch of trees. You know, the deer in the headlights? <laughs> so I see this deer just staring at me. I just started crying, laughing. 
because it was one of those things like he didn't hear me he didn't hear me he definitely heard me he definitely heard me and it just stood there and then like i started laughing and laughing and it just kind of like doop, 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 ran away but one of the more comedic animal run-ins i've had while out on the trail it's pretty interesting too in shenandoah the deer are essentially not afraid of you. They will come very, very close to you compared to up north here. If a deer sees you up here, they're gone like immediately. And I had a similar incident uh, camping in Shenandoah. So I camped at a shelter. Um, I actually camped inside my tent at the shelter area. And there were two other hikers camped really close to me, probably like 10, 15 feet away. Uh, Splat and Dory, if you ever happen to be watching this channel. And I woke up that morning and I, I feel like I heard them talking and I looked out of my vestibule and there was a deer standing like right at my tent, directly at my tent door. And I was like, what is going on? And I figured it might have been some sort of like weird horse situation, which actually reminds me of another story. But I thought they might have been like licking the salt off the tent, but it wasn't. It was just like standing in front of my tent, just like hanging out. I still have no idea why I didn't have food in the tent it was hung up um i believe there was a either a bear locker or bear pole there so had nothing around that it might have been interested in eating maybe just wanted to hang out make some friends or something i don't really know but it was pretty funny nevertheless and the story that that reminded me of was uh grayson highlands actually so grayson highlands is pretty well known on the appalachian trail for having the wild ponies i don't believe they're exceptionally wild i believe they're at least fairly domesticated but they are essentially free roaming out there so there's all sorts of wild ponies and stuff that will come up to you right on trail there's also when we were out there longhorn cattle which is pretty cool from where i'm from uh in new england massachusetts near the city uh you will very very rarely see longhorn cattle like that at all so that was pretty interesting those things are built like houses jeez some of those things were probably like my height <laughs> and just straight beefcakes, literally beefcakes. But the horses were kind of an interesting encounter in that they will come right up to you like they know no bounds. Um, they were eating the cork off of trekking poles. Um, they were biting on bags and stuff like that. So you do have to be weary. But the shelter that night, we stayed at the shelter just outside of the kind of pony area or just in the pony area. And one, the ponies sound like velociraptors or something uh, at night. They were fighting a lot. Um, so you heard like screaming, like horses screaming at each other. And then you'd hear some like running. So it was an interesting experience staying at that shelter. But we woke up that next morning and there was a, uh, a mom and little baby horse. And uh, it was just super cool. The baby was just like chilling on the ground. And I'm pretty sure the mom was just asleep standing up. So she was just kind of leaning there like this <laughs> the baby was just like conked out right next to all of us just next to the shelter another positive animal run-in while out there uh nothing to worry about with uh, the horses besides them possibly biting on you kicking you stuff like that so just be wary if you were in the um the highlands area you see those cool horses they all come up to you be very careful uh there are definitely videos of a guy getting kicked in the junk they will try to bite and lick the salt off of you, your bag, your trekking poles, all of that. But a very cool experience either way. So you see all sorts of other wildlife on the Appalachian Trail, birds, hawks, eagles, stuff like that. Saw all sorts of snakes. There's a lot of these black snakes that aren't venomous, they're not poisonous. I, I think people were referring to them as rat snakes, but I saw if it had to have been 20 something of those, all sorts of chipmunks, squirrels, all sorts of little things. But my next, what I would consider major, run-in with wildlife wasn't until New Jersey. In New Jersey, I ran into a surprising amount of wildlife because I'm pretty sure I was only in New Jersey for three days. Uh, and the next thing I ran into was actually a porcupine. So this is actually in video number 29 of my Appalachian Trail series. Uh, and this was a significantly less scary run-in, of course. Um, I saw it walking right down the trail. And I have video of it walking directly down the trail. And I found it extremely interesting that it just decided to use the trail instead. And I had to have been following that thing on the trail probably for like two or three minutes. Then eventually it found where it wanted to go, took a left and just walked off into the woods. And yeah, that was my porcupine run in. Nothing 
really of note, just kind of cool running into one. I've never seen one in the wild, never seen one in person. So it was kind of cool to see it just out strutting its stuff in the wild. And then also in New Jersey, I saw within those three days, I saw three bears in New Jersey. And these weren't, weren't tiny bears. These were large, large black bears. Two of them, I was walking down the trail toward a shelter where I was gonna stop at for lunch. I was getting there quick. It was probably a quarter mile from the shelter and I saw two of them. They were a relatively long distance away, like a couple hundred feet, but you couldn't miss these guys. They were big, big bears and they were mucking about in some bushes, I assume eating some berries of some sort and they were just living life over in those bushes and they 100% heard me or saw me because I remember both of them looked over and then just immediately went back to eating whatever they were eating in the bushes. Complete disregard for my existence. Absolutely did not even care that I was there. I remember going to the shelter and I was just like sitting there eating with a couple people. There were like four or five people there and I was just like, yeah, there are two gigantic bears like a quarter mile down the thing there. <laughs> they were like, yeah, right. I was like, no, like for real, like Two gigantic bears are extremely close to here right now, but nothing came of it. They, they were quite entertained by the bushes and berries that they were eating. And then the next day, I think it was, so I might show this in the video. I don't know if I got this one on video, but it's a very similar situation. Another bear, this was just one bear alone, and it was just eating berries off the trail, a couple hundred feet away in some bushes, just living its life. Again, did not care in the least. Didn't even look up when I was like around. So this next run in, I think is one of the, the cooler of the stories here. In my opinion, one of the kind of cooler coincidental stories out of this whole thing. I was right around the Pennsylvania, New Jersey border and I stopped at Wind Gap, Pennsylvania. And I ended up staying, I think it was the Travel Inn. And right next to the Travel Inn, there was a place called the Soapy Suds Laundry Mat. And the owner was there. A very cool place, by the way, if you happen to stop in Wing Gap. I don't know if it's the same people. I mean, this was almost three years ago at this point. But the owner immediately knew I was a through hiker and he was like, hey man, I got uh, loaner clothes in the, in the closet there if you want. You can change, do all your laundry up. So I started talking to him for a while just about this, that, and the other. It just seemed like a super nice dude. And then another customer came in and he had a snake on his shirt and he was telling me, he goes, oh, you know, this guy's a professional snake handler. So he was talking to me, he's like, yeah, yeah, you hiking? He's like, you seen anything cool out there like snakes? I was like, no, nah, man, not a single one. I was, I said to him, the, whatever those black snakes were, and he told me the actual name of them. So I was like, I've seen probably 20 something of them, man, but I haven't seen anything else. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. So he had his computer with him and he pulled up these like videos and pictures of him with like these crazy snakes. So we were just chatting back and forth, back and forth. And he was like, so when you do run into him, what's the first thing you do? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're walking down the trail. You hear that rattle of a rattlesnake. He goes, what should you do? I was like, uh, I don't know, not die? <laughs> he goes, stop. Said, stop. He goes, immediately, stop. I said, okay. He goes, stop, look around and see where that thing is. You need to plan your next steps very, very carefully. Plan your path and get out of the snake's way. Let it be, let it do its thing. It won't bother you if you don't bother it. I said to him, I was like, dude, I know now that I've talked to you, I haven't seen a snake all trail. I said, I'm going to run into a snake now out on the trail. He's like, oh, you're bound to run into one at some time. I think it was two days later. So not that day that I left Wing Gap, but I believe it was the next day after that, if I remember correctly. I was walking down the trail and I heard <laughs> rattlesnake. I had this guy's whatever in my head stopped immediately. Was like, oh my God, like looking around, where is it, where is it? And I looked up and it was in front of me directly on the trail. I just backed up a little bit, kept backing up, got off of the trail, off to the side, and then it started moving away from me. So I started recording, of course, at that point. But absolute chance encounter with a professional snake handler at a laundromat in Pennsylvania. And I run into a rattlesnake. It had to have been, what, 48 hours later. Coincidence? I don't know, man. Crazy things, man, crazy times. It, that's one of my favorite stories on the Appalachian Trail and I feel like I never get to tell it. So, <laughs> super cool to see in person and super cool that it didn't kill me, it didn't bite me. It warned me and was like, if you come any closer, you may die. Very thoughtful of a wild animal, if you ask me. And then my next major run-in while out on the Appalachian Trail was in Connecticut. And oddly enough, it wasn't even on trail. 
So I got off, uh, I forget the town's name uh, in Connecticut. There's a town that you can get off and walk into. And it's not a far walk at all. Like the trail kind of cuts very, very close to the town. Um, but it's in Connecticut. The place was called the Tinker's Sun. Very interesting place. Probably one of the cooler spots I stayed at. It is a antique motorcycle shop repair slash breakfast place. A very hodgepodge collection of things, but super cool. It's a couple that runs the spot to the best of my knowledge. So I showed up in their backyard <laughs> and was just kind of like hanging out because nobody was there. And they came home, they were out doing whatever. And he said, oh, hiking, yeah, yeah. Pitch your tent wherever, man, make yourself at home. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he, he was like, yeah, power right there on the, uh, the barn door right there. Uh, yeah, man, blah, 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 blah. Food, you can call these places. Was giving me the, one, the ones and twos of the place. So I <laughs> set my tent up right in the backyard. Ordered a pizza and a two liter. I think two other hikers showed up, if I remember correct. Both pitched tents in the backyard as well. And I had some leftover pizza. So I had a Ziploc bag inside of my food bag. So I took the gallon bag, put the pizza in there, put it in my food bag, rolled it all up, and I put it back in my backpack. And I left my backpack outside of my door of my tent vestibule. Went to sleep, and about probably two o'clock in the morning, I think it was from what I remember, I heard pitter patter underneath my vestibule. And I woke up and my immediate thought was, oh, there's a mouse or a chipmunk or a squirrel or something trying to get into my bag to get that pizza. I was rolled over, not facing my door, and I rolled over to like shoo it away. So I rolled over and I turned in no exaggeration, probably this close, <laughs> inches to my face was a skunk. Luckily, the bug netting was between us and luckily the skunk wasn't very startled that I was in there rolling around. So I just froze, absolutely froze for what felt like, I don't know, like six hours was probably at most a minute. And the thing's just like sniffing around all inside my vestibule. And I had both of my tent doors closed. So there would be essentially zero ventilation. You can't hit the thing and like shoo it away. If I scare it and it decides to spray, I'm going to one, be possibly asphyxiated inside of my tent. Two, I'm going to smell like a skunk for the next like month. So I just sat there completely frozen. Please don't spray me, please don't spray me. And it just kind of kept looking around, looking around. And then it walked out just underneath my vestibule and I didn't move. <laughs> it was like the fear, fear just baked in me because the backside of my tent too has kind of like a mini vestibule. So I was like, what if it just went over the other side? Like, what if I turn over and it's there now? And I sat there for what felt like eternity until I felt safe to move again. I was like, could you imagine I get all the way to Connecticut and then I have to get off the trail because I'm like blinded and just reek of like skunk spray, almost died inside of my tent from being sprayed by a skunk. And I still, to this day, I don't know what else you could do besides just lay there and hope that it goes away. Could you imagine if I just like didn't roll over and just swatted behind me and like hit the skunk? Like if that thing sprayed me, oh, <laughs> very, very confined space. Oh my God, it, it would have been a nightmare. All of my gear, oh geez. That was probably one of the crazier stories of the entire trail. I like, I can see the thing in my brain, like when I turned over, just how close it was to my face. But luckily it went well. I didn't end up getting sprayed. We live to tell the tale, we live to see another day. And there was also one night, I forget, maybe it was in Pennsylvania? So I'm kind of jumping back and forth here on the trail. Um, but there was one night we stayed at a shelter and I feel like I remember reading in Gut Hook that it said beavers around the area. All through the night, the entirety of the night, we heard like And then you would hear of like trees falling. It was one of the more bizarre nights I feel like I've spent on trail, but interesting. I, I, and every time I would hear the little pitter patter, I would look out with a flashlight and I wouldn't see anything. I thought I was actually going crazy. So woke up the next morning, didn't sleep very well that night at all. There were some people went back to the shelter. I was in my tent. Most of the other people too were in their tents. And I went back to the shelter to sit at the table to eat in the morning. And everybody, I was like, you guys were hearing that all night? And they were like, dude, all night. <laughs> so like they were, they were active, active all night. Just like, I don't know what they were doing, building their fort somewhere or something like that. But it was just pitter patter and trees falling 
all night. And you could see that they were around, like you could look around at the trees and they had the bite marks all over them. So it was interesting, interesting to say the least. So my last real Appalachian Trail wildlife story, I was actually camped with Big Mama and Leapfrog an Extra Mile. We were in the 100 Mile Wilderness in Maine and we were camped in this kind of one-off spot we had hiked into the night. Like it was completely dark when we set up. We were relatively close to a water source and above us there was kind of a hill. You could see there was tracks that kind of went up there. So I woke up pretty early, opened my vestibule to my tent. It was just kind of sitting there. I was looking at the gut hook map for the day, seeing what we had ahead. And I remember I was sitting there on my phone and then out of the corner, right next to the phone, a gigantic moose head. <laughs> so there was a moose. We were down in our tents here and there was a moose up on the hill here, right where those tracks were. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> put the phone down. And I was like, why am I putting the phone down? I gotta take a picture of this thing. So I did end up taking a picture, unfortunately only on my phone. And it was just kind of like looking at us like, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, <laughs> it clearly looked like it was the spot where it walked down to get to water like every morning. But it was a super cool like, experience just seeing one out in the wild. I had never seen a moose out in the wild like that. I apologize to the moose for blocking its path through the water. So after the Appalachian Trail, there were no real major encounters at all uh, throughout my hikes up in New Hampshire again. But the next actual encounter was on the Colorado Trail. And my first Colorado Trail encounter or run-in um, was with a bear again. I, I wouldn't really call it an encounter as this thing was raiding a dumpster at a campground we were staying at. So it was a campground right at one of the passes you come to on the Colorado Trail. I'll try to put it right here, whatever the, um, the pass was. And we went down to the pass, we got a hitch down into town, grabbed a burger, came back up, and we were like, yep, not hiking, too full of food. And we ended up staying at the campground. It was a pay for like walk-in, drive-in campground. There were three of us that stayed that night, three of us doing the CT and then a couple of this girl's friends came. We were all kicking it in our tents. It was probably like two, three o'clock in the morning when we first started hearing it. And you could hear just like metal clanging of the dumpster. So there was a dumpster that had doors on the top of it, but there was a huge metal bar across the doors to prohibit bears from like getting inside of it. This bear spent, it had to have been like two or three hours trying to get that bar open. So the girl that was with us, woke up and she said to me, she's like, Chris? I'm like, yeah. Do you hear that? I do. That's a bear, right? I said, it's 100% a bear. What do we do? I was like, we hope that it stays entertained or that it opens that dumpster and leaves us alone. <laughs> so that dumpster was not very far from our tents at all. Ended up essentially awake the rest of that night slash morning. Fell back asleep, you know, like kind of drift off back into sleep, but then you'd hear it rustling again. And then at one point, I think it was around like 5.30, six-ish, the noise just stopped. So I was like, one of two things happened. It got inside or it gave up. But I ended up getting up that morning, went to go to the bathroom. The bathroom was right next to the dumpster and the bear got in. The pole that went across the dumpster was like completely bent. I still don't understand how it did it. Like that thing has to be like solid steel but the pole was completely bent and there was trash all over the ground. So it got in there somehow, ate what it wanted to and left. But could you imagine you get up to go to the bathroom that night and <laughs> walk into a massive black bear ripping apart a dumpster in front of you? <laughs> Luckily, that was not the case. And uh, unfortunately it got what it was looking for, but at least it didn't get us. Throughout the Colorado Trail, you run into like all sorts of uh, marmots. The marmots are kind of cool. They just kind of chirp at you. Um, the older ones don't seem to care that you're there, but the younger ones will typically just run away from you. But kind of cool to look at. It was the first time I had seen marmots. And you'll also see out on the Colorado Trail, you will run into all sorts of cows. You will see cows for days. There's a portion on the trail, at least the year I did it, right after Collegiate West, the route we took, that essentially you turn into like a straight cow country walk for like two or three days in my case. And you just see so many cows. A lot of the land it passes through, I think is forest service land or some whatever land that they use for cow grazing. And then luckily one of the coolest animal encounters I think I had in all of my hikes, we were coming through just above what, I forget the lake, I'll put it on the, um, the video here if I remember. And the kid Jacob I was hiking with, him and I were just kind of standing there looking out, taking some pictures. And we saw down below us, 
like it, we thought we were like are those cows because we had seen so many cows over the past couple of days and then well well below us in the bushes were three moose and i was like oh man i hope we go down that way and i looked on the thing the uh gps and i was like we do we go right next to that so we kept going down and i went slightly there's another trail that runs through it so i went off the colorado trail down this trail and I ended up just hiding in some of these bushes, waiting for the moose, hoping like they would appear. And they did, they came. There were three of them total, but I only saw two of them actually come out. And uh, I just hung in this bush for probably like, had to have been like 30 minutes and just sat there watching these moose to like do their thing. It was just so cool. They were just sitting there munching on the leaves and stuff. And then at one point, I got up to try to get like a better angle. And I think that's when one of them saw me. And then they both turned back and started walking the other way. I would have loved to have like followed them, but I was like, ah, I'm gonna leave them alone. I don't wanna bother them. But it was like super cool to see them like relatively up close and in person. I think that's it for my major wildlife stories. And I guess what it all comes down to is wild animals for the most part want absolutely nothing to do with you. I think using common sense is probably the best approach when you run into them. Everything is going to be a judgment call when you see them. A lot of those run-ins that I had could have went completely different, but luckily for me, they did not. So if you go out there, understand that there are possibilities you are going to run into wildlife, but if you know how you should react and know the proper ways to react, you can at least mitigate most of those dangers. There's risk and reward with everything in real life. It, there's no guarantees for anyone. With hiking and wildlife run-ins, the best thing to do mitigate that risk as best as possible, researching the best ways to deal with wildlife encounters while out on the trail, and most importantly, by respecting wildlife. Let's say for instance, that moose encounter, when they started to move, and I was like, no, I need better pictures, and I ran after them, and one of those moose just decided to knock me down, trample me. Where does the fault lie in that? That fault would lie 100% with me. Respect wildlife, learn how to react when wildlife comes, and use good judgment. Good judgment's hard to find these days, but use the best that you can. And hopefully my stories here will at least give you some sort of, I don't wanna say comfort, but just realize that all wildlife encounters aren't necessarily terrible while out on the trails. Can there be? Absolutely. And that's something we deal with anytime we go out to hike a trail like that, camp out in the wild. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked the video, drop it a like. If you loved it, consider commenting, subscribing. Don't follow me on Instagram. I'm not really updating that anymore. It's just kind of a placeholder at this point. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns, bear stories, moose stories, animal stories of any sort you want to share down below, feel free to do that. Resources for people to learn about how to interact with wildlife on the trail. Please leave the links to that below. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. We'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoy. Hope the video's not too long. See you later.